Hello again and welcome to another Warlord Wednesday, the episode of the week where we talk about all things bolt action. Now today we're going to be continuing our starter army review series and turning our eyes to the Eastern Front. It's time for the Red Army and the Soviet Army Winter Starter Box Set. Now, in case you've not seen one of my starter army videos before, what I like to do is go over the contents of the box so you know exactly what you're getting and then also go into a bit more of a deep dive on the individual units themselves so you know which ones are metal, which ones are plastic, if it's an older kit, a newer kit, what weapon options you get with it. And then at the end, I like to do a little bit of a comparison to some of the other starter sets available from Warlord Games. Now, the first thing to mention is that this starter army is for, of course, the Soviet Union. Now, some people were worry about picking up the Soviets because they think well they only really fought against the Germans and that was it. That's not true at all. The Soviets of course did the vast majority of their fighting on the Eastern Front but pretty much every Axis faction was involved on the Eastern Front at some point. So you'll have no problem with fighting against Germans or Italians and Warlord has just released a whole load of new Italian models so we're going to see those becoming more and more popular. You're also going to be able to fight against Bulgarians and Finns and Hungarians and even some uh, Romanians as well. So there's loads of different factions that you can fight on the Eastern Front. So now let's take a look at what you get in this starter set. So you will get four Soviet HQ figures and these will be in metal. You'll get a Soviet medium machine gun team and that will be a Maxim and that will be in metal as well. You'll get a Soviet medium mortar team and that will be metal. And then you'll get a plastic KV-1 or KV-2 tank. You can't get two tanks in the set. It can either be built as the KV-1 or the KV-2. You should be able to actually build both two options and so you can swap them out, but you don't get two separate vehicles. I just want to make that clear. One tank, that comes with two options. You then also get 80 Soviet winter infantry and these are in plastic. Now, I just want to say straight off the bat that this kit comes with the most infantry out of any of the start sets. 80 Soviet infantry is going to be more than enough than you're ever going to need for your Soviet army. It's going to give you all the different weapon options that you're going to need. If you want to run Red Tide and have loads of Soviet conscripts and recreate enemy at the gates, you can do that with 80 Soviet infantry. If you want to have a more elite force and lots of SMGs and stuff like that, you're going to have all the options you could possibly need for your Soviet infantry. So 80 infantry is fantastic. And to me, that is the main draw for this box set because with a lot of the starter armies that you get, you get enough infantry to build a basic force, but inevitably you're going to have to pick up an extra box somewhere. Not with the Soviet one, you're going to get all the infantry you're ever going to need. Now, a little note I do want to drop in here. Please be aware of the metal figures. Metal figures are very different the plastic ones. Obviously, plastic ones go together relatively easily. The paint doesn't chip off them. They're great. Metal figures, you will need to use super glue when you are assembling them. And I would recommend that you get a high quality super glue. It has been my experience that metal figures do not like to go together with your basic store brand style of super glue. So I personally, and there's no sponsorship here or anything, this is my experience, I'm just passing it on to you guys. I like to use the Lockite super glue and I like to use the max precision stuff so it doesn't go all over my hands. So seriously, check out Lockite super glue. I've been using it for all of my metal figures for, for years at this point and I would never go to another one. So yeah, really recommend that. Just be aware of that when you're building them, you know, you might need to hold the bits together for at least a minute to make sure they glue and of course once you finish painting them I highly recommend you give them a matte varnish so that they don't chip because metal models the paint will chip off them very very easily. So now that we've had an overview of the models in the box let's now do a bit of a deep dive on what you can expect from these models. Now the first thing to mention is we're going to be looking at the Soviet infantry first. Now the Soviet infantry kit is an old one and you can tell that because you can see that the arms down here do not have the weapons molded into them. In fact, the weapons will come on a separate sprue here. Now, if you've not had any experience of gluing weapons into hands, then let me give you a very big heads up. It can be an exercise in absolute frustration, especially when you come from Warhammer 40k where everything's molded in, and especially if you've been dealing with the later Warlock kits where all the weapons get molded in. 
it can be incredibly frustrating trying to get the models to line up with the weapons, especially if you're using plastic glue, they're going to slip. You're going to find them holding them at all sort of wonky angles. So my advice is when you're building these models, be patient. It will take longer than you expect unless you want your guys that are holding big balls of snow where all the super glue frosts around there, around the uh, the weapons of the hands. Make sure that you're just careful and you're precise and you're holding the weapons in the hands for at least 30 seconds for each model. Okay, That way you should avoid any slippage and you should avoid having to keep using more and more glue. Now, another thing to mention is not all of the infantry are going to come with those classic Soviet greatcoats. Each sprue has eight men on it and you will get five with the greatcoats and five with the woolen uniform so just be aware of that i personally love the great coats and i wish that warlord games would re-release this kit and just have everyone with the great coats i think that would look much much better but just be aware that you are going to have some people that are going to have to rock around in that more padded uniform and not everyone is going to be having one of those great russian great coats now i know that sounds like we're starting off on a negative note with this kit but now let's move on to the positives on the flip side, when not having weapons that are molded into the hands, it gives you a lot more poseability. You could make every single one of these infantry have a different and unique pose. Another thing to mention is that by giving you these separate weapon sprues, Warlord are giving you so many more weapon options. When you find with the weapons that are molded into the hands, you find that Warlord Games tries to cram it all on one of these infantry sprues. But when it comes to the Soviets, they're like, you know what? Have a whole separate sprue full of weapons. You get more weapon options here than you do in any other kit. You can give everyone a rifle you get a sniper rifle inbuilt there's no need to buy a soviet sniper team you get a sniper rifle you get light machine guns with every single one of these sprues you get anti-tank rifles you get more smgs and you can shake a stick at you get pistols you get bayonets you even get captured panzerfaust you've got every kind of weapon option you could possibly need for your infantry to be specific, you actually get 11 rifles on this sprue. You get one of them being a sniper rifle and one of them being a short little cavalry carbine as well, which is really cool. You also get seven SMGs. You've got one, two, three here. You've got another two on here and here. Another one here and then one more on the main infantry sprue itself. That's actually incredible. Most uh, infantry sprues come with like maybe three SMGs. If, you're, if, if you get a late war German set, you'll be lucky. You might get... Three, two SMGs and two uh, assault rifles, maybe three and, uh, and two assault rifles, but you never get like seven or eight SMGs. So they've been really generous on the SMG front, which is great. You also get a captured Panzerfaust and you get a anti-tank rifle and you get a light machine gun. So you honestly just get every kind of weapon you could possibly need. What's really nice about this is that it means that each sprue can be maxed out with a certain kind of weapon. So if you want to go for that red infantry horde, just mozzin the gants and balls and bayonets, you could easily do that. You've got more than enough rifles to shake your stick at. You've got ones with bayonets. You've got ones without bayonets. You've even got some of the SVT-44s, one with one uh, without a bayonet, one with a bayonet. Like I said, you've got the little cavalry carbine. So you can go for the full red tide. Or maybe you want to build a really elite, hardcore Russian squad. That way, with all like S SMGs. That way you can you can do that. You can build seven of these guys with SMGs and have another one with an LMG. That's a lot of firepower coming out of just one sprue of guys. So overall, what the Soviet sprue lacks in maybe you know easiness of putting together, it more than makes up with the fact that Warlord Games are giving you so many bits and weapon options. I mean, they even give you three kinds of pistol. Now, they give you the old Nagant revolver, what looks like a Tokarev, and maybe even another Tokarev, or even like a Lend Lease 1911. It just comes with all the different bits you could possibly want. Hell, I know I'm really overing the pudding here, guys, but it comes with two kinds of bipod for the LMG. You don't even need two kinds of bipod, but it comes with two kinds of bipod for your LMG and also for your uh, anti tank rifle as well. So it just comes with absolutely everything. So it might be an older kit. 
It might be a frustrating kit to put together, but it certainly is a generous kit when it comes to bits and weapon options. Now let's take a look at that plastic KV-1 slash KV-2. So this is what the tank is going to look like up close and personal. We can get a little bit of a closer look at it there. Now this is the KV-1. Now the KV-1 is really interesting because it's actually a tank that you can use right from early war all the way through to late war. It's actually one of the few heavy tanks that you can get from straight off the bat. They had them straight away starting in World War II. So that's actually a really unique thing that the Soviets get over a lot of the other factions. So when you're a German player, you know, you're playing early war, mid war against a German opponent and he thinks, oh, he's, you know, Mr. King of the Castle because he's got a, uh, you know, a Panzer IV, you can be like, no, 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 no. Panzer IV, Schmanzer IV. I got a KV-1. I've got a heavy tank. So it is an absolutely arm beast. It is quite expensive points wise, but there is actually an early war version and a late war version. And the late war version is a little bit cheaper because they didn't give it quite as much armor. So that's kind of cool to be aware of. You can also, of course, build it as a KV-2. And this is what the KV-2 looks like. It's an absolute monster of a tank okay now the kv1 comes with a medium anti-tank gun the kv2 comes with a heavy howitzer and that is just such a powerful gun weirdly thanks to the way that warlord does the points the kv1 even though i would say it is the weaker of the two variants is actually more expensive than the kv2 and that's just because the, the warlord doesn't price uh howitzers appropriately in my opinion so if I was you, I'd probably build it as the KV-2, but you could easily tell that you could build this with both of the different turret options. Um, it's a really good tank, uh, and it is a bit of a strange one. I would have thought that Warlord would put like the T-34 in the starter set, but to be honest, guys, you can't go wrong with the KV-1. And little side note here, it's actually personally my favorite Soviet tank of World War II. Now, the last thing to take a look at with this data set is the metal support models. Now, here you can see you get your medium machine gun. Now, you, if I can, hopefully I can zoom in on that. Oh, yeah, look at that Maxim gun, guys. Now, you guys know I have a really big soft spot for medium machine guns. They're not the best unit, but they're often one of the coolest units in each army. And in my opinion, no starter set is complete without a medium machine gun. So it's great to see that there is one in the starter army, and it's great to see that you get the good old Maxim. Interesting side note, the Soviets are one of two factions in bot action that actually also get access to heavy machine guns. There isn't one in this starter set, but that just might be something for you to consider when you're expanding your force out. You can get the Maxim, which is a medium machine gun, or you can get the Dushka, which is a heavy machine gun. Of course, you also get the metal medium mortar as well. Now, one thing to mention is all of these crew members are going to be single piece models, but the weapons themselves will require a little bit of assembly. In my experience, you normally have to put the mortar tube onto the base plate and also the uh, bipod. And also for the machine gun, you'll have to put the Maxim onto the wheels here as well. So they will come in a couple of parts, but mostly they're gonna be uh, pretty simple to put together. And then you've got your command models as well. Now, what I tend to find is Warlord Games gives you two officer models, but you never need two officer models in bot action, not in a normal size game. But what you often do need is one officer and one attendant. So what I like to do, especially with this Soviet kit, is have this guy in the really cool big great coat and the binoculars. He is your second lieutenant or your first lieutenant. And then you have this chap here who's meant to be some sort of junior officer. You just have him as the attendant. And so that makes a really effective little hq slot but if you do need to play a bigger game of bolt action you want a senior officer like a captain or maybe even a major and the lieutenant you can easily have this guy as your senior officer and this guy as your junior officer but if you're playing a normal thousand point game what i would say is make him your junior officer and make him your junior officer's best friend so that covers the starter army and all of its different units individually but what i want to do now is just give a little bit of advice on how i would build this starter set now what you're going to want to do with all of this plastic infantry is work out how many special weapons and support weapons and rifles you're going to want to build. Now, for me, I think the solid core of any Soviet army is made up of riflemen. Don't forget, you're going to get 12 of them for free just because that's one of your national traits. You get that in addition to the other five squads that you can take. So I would probably build a solid core of 40 to 30 to 40 riflemen with this set. What I then do is build uh, six to eight 
light machine guns, and I would build three anti-tank rifles. So even though you get loads and loads of anti-tank rifles, you can't take more than three at an army anyway, because they come as little two-man teams. The Soviets are actually unique, where one of their national traits allows them to take three anti-tank teams rather than the one that everyone else can take so you're never going to need more than three but you're probably going to want at least one of them so what i would do is considering you've got so many infantry is build three anti-tank rifles and that's all the anti-tank rifles you're ever going to need and then i would build the remaining models as smgs guys now remember as soviets you don't get access to things like stg 44s or anything like that but what you do get access to is a buttload of cheap smg infantry everything from siberian veterans just a standard smg squads and to guards infantry so i would build 40 rifles and then i'd have my three uh, anti-tank rifles i'd have my uh my my six to eight lmgs and the rest of it i just go smgs all the way and maybe sling some captured panzerfaust on the back of some of the models that's how i would build this start set if you are an experienced soviet player watching this video though please let us know down in the comment section how you would build this starter army i'm not a soviet player at heart although i have played against them many times and when i first got into bar action i did have a soviet army although i didn't really know what i was doing with it so if you are more experienced than i please let me know down in that comment section how you would put together these plastic infantry now i want to briefly compare this starter army to some of the other ones you can get in bar action the first thing to mention is it is slightly more expensive than your traditional starter armies. This one's going to cost you £116. Most starter armies are about 106 and you can even get some of the cheaper ones like the Africa Corps or the 8th Army for about £89 from Warlord Games. There are some even cheaper starter armies than that. You can actually get British Airborne and American Airborne for about £59. So... But they are much smaller and much, much more limited. I think you, for your £116, you get a really good deal. You definitely get your money's worth here. What you've got to remember is you don't need to buy another infantry model ever again once you've got the starter army. All you're going to want to pick up is maybe a T-34, maybe a Katusha rocket, maybe a light tank or an armoured car as well. But you're not going to need any more infantry. And you might want to pick up an anti-tank gun like a Zis or maybe even a medium artillery piece. But that's it. Really, you buy the starter army and you don't need to buy anything else for it at all. Like I said, some of the other starter sets, like the German ones, they come with a really good army, but it's kind of fixed on what you can take. Whereas with this one, it's like, no, you're getting more than enough. You may never need to buy another Soviet model again. You're going to get plenty of infantry that makes means you can build a variety of armies straight off the bat. You're getting two different kinds of tanks straight off the bat. You're getting a couple of key support teams. It's just overall a really strong set. If I was to say there was one weakness with the starter army is that it lacks some serious anti-tank. You have got the KV tank, which with the howitzer can certainly put some HE pins on an enemy vehicle, but it's unlikely to actually kill them. And then you've also got the medium anti-tank gun that comes on the KV-1, but a medium anti-tank gun really is going to struggle if you start coming up against things like Tiger tanks or even King Tigers. Don't forget the Germans are going to have some of the best armor in the game, and one medium anti-tank gun and three anti-tank rifles really ain't going to cut it. I mean, anti-tank rifles can struggle to get through some armored cars, all right? They really are what I would call soft anti-tank and a bit more of a psychological weapon than anything else. So what I would say is if you want to build off this set, you want to get yourself a little bit more mobility. You might want to consider like a truck or two, maybe an armored car, but really consider getting some kind of anti-tank. I think if you had a KV-1 and a medium anti-tank gun, like a Zis-3, that would be enough anti-tank to really see off any standard German armor that you're going to come across in a 1,000 points or 1,250 point game. So that would be where I would focus my expansion efforts, getting a little bit of variety on the armor and maybe also expanding onto my support teams with some anti-tank guns or maybe some uh, medium artillery. But that covers everything to do with the Soviet Start Army. One thing I would say, if you're considering picking up bolt action, be it the Soviets or maybe another faction, then please consider buying your models from Element Games and using my affiliate link down in the description below. By using that affiliate link, you can save yourself up to 10 to 25% off on all of your wargaming needs. They've got a great variety of models and it really helps support the channel how it works is element games give me a little bit of a finder's fee for directing a customer their way now to be absolutely clear it costs you no more 
Okay, Element Games takes a little bit of the profit they make and they hand it over to me. It's a win-win-win for everyone. You save money on your models, I get a little bit of a finder's fee, and Element Games gets a customer that they wouldn't normally have. In addition to that, when at checkout, if you use my referral code, Tim3921, and you'll be able to find that in the description as well, you'll actually earn double store credit, which means that you will save even more money in the long run on your future purchases with Element Games. It really is just a great way to save money and support the channel. But that's all we've got time for today. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. And if you never want to miss an episode and see more bolt action content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. I tend to do one bolt action video every Wednesday, and then every other week, I tend to do a bolt action battle report as well. If you've really enjoyed the video, please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. But that's all for now. Thank you for watching. And of course, as always, I'll see you guys next time.